Okay, part two of making our donut holes. Right now I've been very patient getting my temperature up to 350 degrees. So now I'm gonna take and put my donut holes into the hot grease. Now, if you just drop them, you are going to get burned. Um, this is not too splattery because there's not a lot of water on it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and place them in here. Now, due to the nature of our slotted spoons, I'm not gonna let this rest inside that hot oil because it's not heat resistant like a silicone is. You're gonna notice that there's bubbling happening, but it's not spitting. And I'm just gonna let that sit for about three and a half minutes. I'm gonna use color as well as the time to help me determine if that um, donut hole is done or not. And as your recipe suggests, we're gonna do a sample one. And I'm going to just occasionally come in here and give it a little bit of a turn. And I wanna see it be a dark uh, golden brown. Um, about the color of our covers here at school, maybe even a touch darker. And right now we're going on about one minute. And again, I'm just gonna take and kind of roll this around. I forgot to put my um, paper toweling out for my um, don't hold a sit on after it comes out. Uh, the thing about grease is, number one, <laughs> scary for me, is that you could get burned. So I want to review, what are the first aid procedures for getting um, a burn on you? Do you remember? If you said get it under cold water as soon as possible, you are correct. If you let it sit, if you let the burn just sit there, it's gonna to continue to go deeper into your tissues. So if you can take and get it immediately underneath cold water, you're gonna reduce the progression of that burn into deeper tissues and your burn will not be quite as severe. But it's gotta be immediately. And cold water is just great. Um, also another thing that can happen is this grease could splatter over and get on the, on the cooktop. If it does and it gets, um, so hot it's going to spontaneously combust in other words it's going to start on fire and if it starts on fire the first thing that you're going to want to not do is put water on it because what's going to happen if you do it's going to spread and working with deep fat there's always the risk of those two things and i'm looking at about two minutes i still don't think i want it to be a dark golden brown the one side looks like it's almost getting there but i don't feel comfortable about the second now you might say, Mrs. Wiscombe, that's so dark, that's so dark. They are gonna be a little darker than what you maybe would su suspect. Um, but if you don't have them cooked on the inside, they're not gonna taste that great. In the end, could you eat the raw dough? Yes, would it hurt you? No, would it be as good tasting? No. So we wanna be patient and give it for that three and a half minutes. All right, so I am just about there and I feel fairly comfortable about the color of that. Um, again, it's kind of a darker golden brown, about even darker than our cupboards, maybe not quite, but pretty darn close to being a little darker. So they're actually a brown color, not a tan color, but along that same color range, not as dark as our cooktop. All right, when you get them to the point where you're done, and again, I'm not resting this slotted spoon in my um, hot oil indefinitely. If you had a metal slotted spoon, it wouldn't be a biggest issue, but ours are, are a, um, a plastic one, so we can't let them sit in there for too long or we're gonna have big problems. You don't wanna be eating plastic, that's not good for you. Okay, enough talking, let's go ahead and take these out. Okay, I'm gonna give it just a minute to dribble drop, and then I'm gonna place it onto my um, cutting board, cutting board, goodness sakes, onto my, my paper towel. Now my instructions tell me that I wanna cut through this first sample one and make sure the inside's done so I can have a feel for what that color's really supposed to be. But while I'm waiting for that cool to cool a second, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my second batch in. <clears throat> and I'll just put them on my slotted spoon then let them fall from my slotted spoon onto there. If you put more than four in at a time, um, you're gonna drop the temperature of that oil too far and it's gonna end up being, um, or cooking too fast. All right, so we have gone ahead and got this sitting for about 30 seconds. It's still gonna be hot, but we want it to be hot because the hotness is, and the oil is going to take and have the um, donut hole melt the sugar onto it. And then when you've completely coated that, then you're gonna go ahead and take it out. And that, my dear friends, it's still kinda hot, is the donut holes that you're gonna eat here at school. I'm now gonna open that up, but I needed to roll it first. 
And let's double check and make sure that it's cooked inside. And my friends, that is a luscious, delicious donut hole. That's all nice and cooked and soft in there. All right, I'm gonna get back to this. I'm gonna finish cooking them. Um, and then maybe I'll share them and maybe I won't. Oh, I will. All right, so enjoy these donut holes. And remember, you now know and have experienced how you need, you do it with the palm of your hand, push, turn, rotate, fold. Push, rotate, fold. Push, okay, and cut in. That's what you're working with with your pastry blender. Um, oh, one last thing. Um, if you take and notice that your temperature is getting above 350, pull it off your heat, then put it back on as it starts to chill um, and get a little bit, get it back up to 350. Okay, enjoy.